Hello wonderful friends and family around the world and welcome back to our channel. Today we are filming, someone is saying hello, <laughs> we are filming outside. Um, it's beautiful weather, it's blue sky, you might be able to see in the reflection. It's also fairly breezy which you may be picking up if the camera is wobbling. I don't know what day it is, I don't know how many days we've been in quarantine but um, we're surviving. Today I thought I would share with you my famous Kegs Chickpea Feasty Salad and all you have to do is grab your ingredients, a board and some chopping gear. You don't even need an oven or a hob or anything to heat anything up. If you'd like to follow along I shall leave the recipe below. First thing you need to get is a glamorous assistant preferably. Would you like to pass me the chickpeas to begin with? And I shall show our friends what chickpeas look like. <laughs> <laughs> We're both going ninja. Yes, I am losing it. If you've seen our last video, I uh, started it in hysteria. Thank you. So this is just a jar of chickpeas drained and rinsed. Then you also need 250 grams of cherry tomatoes. And this is what we're going to be working with first. <laughs> Thank you, mummy. Um, so, fresh packet. Everything's been disinfected, by the way. Just thought I'd throw that out there. We have disinfected everything. And these have been in their own little quarantine uh, for about a week, so they're fine. And I've washed my hands, obviously. And what you're going to need is a knife. Now, I would recommend a serrated edge knife, such as this steak knife. If it's not serrated, it's not going to cut. You're just going to smush it down. You get tomato everywhere. So, serrated edge knife, tomatoes in half and in a bowl. So I'll need another bowl, the blue one. Thank you kindly. Okay, so, whilst I am chopping these, I thought I would chat to you guys a little bit about what we've been doing. I have been working, but amongst my working, instead of socialising, I have been catching up on all the TV shows that I should have been watching for the last year, that people have been recommending to me. Killing Eve is back. I've been watching that. Mummy and I have just finished uh, the final season of Mrs. Maisel, or The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, is what it's actually called. 10 out of 10, highly recommend, just brilliant. And we have now embarked upon The Morning Show, which is Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. If you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend that also. It's very uh, current affairsy. And all day long, I have been listening to BBC Radio One, which perhaps you can't get in the States, I don't imagine you can, but if you are in England, you'll know what I'm talking about. And uh, they do play a wonderful playlist of various years, and they do play a 90s playlist every now and again, which I've been enjoying. And what else have we been watching, Mummy? What Belgravia. Have you been? <gasps> Belgravia. Mummy likes all these sort of Downton Abbey-esques. I do too. Um, so we've, ju we've finished that, haven't we? And what are we going to watch next that's similar? Oh, Jamestown. Jamestown. It's not similar, is it? But it's cultural. <laughs> it's it's set in the 1600s. Just realised you brought me the wrong bowl. Well, you didn't say which one, did you? I need the blue one. I, th I thought I said blue one. So I'll need another bowl. The blue one. So that is what I needed. There you go, 250 and half. In we go. And what we're going to do is marinate them just during the time that we're going to be dealing with everything else. So we need olive oil, salt, pepper and one garlic. <coughs> clove. I nearly said cube then. And you need basil leaves. I need five leaves. Oh, that's my job. Isn't if it? you'd like to assist. So, um, when it comes to garlic crushing, that's something we have an issue with because someone broke the crusher. You didn't break it. So we can now grate. Well, did you break it? Did you not? What no, happened to it then? Threw it away. Of course you did. Why? I don't like it. What's wrong with it? Did you replace it? No, because it's too chunky in the drawer. You like to have all your kitchen drawers empty. This is the problem. Yeah, because I'd don't. i rather use them for something else. I don't like kitchens. So, large garlic clove, in with tomatoes, and you can leave those... Five, basil. or do you think six if they're small? They're not small. Basil. Um, I prefer to chop my basil with a scissors. Oops. I prefer to chop basil with scissors, uh, just because it's easier. But you can use a knife, or you can just uh, tear it if you prefer. Okay, so basil chopped, put it in with the tomatoes and salt and pepper. I don't have a napkin out here, so never mind. Our salt cellar's broken. Our salt comes from here. <laughs> I don't 
<laughs> so stupid. We need to buy a new salt cellar, but Mother wants a specific. Well, can I tell you why? I want mace, coal and mason. Yeah. Always works, they're brilliant. But you can't get them in Spain. And um, olive oil. Uh, I just eyeball it. Mm -hmm. Just enough to sort of... It's the extra version. Yeah. About a tablespoon and a half. Um, but just the drizzle, really. And I'll need a large spoon, please. Thank you, madame. Mix so that the garlic that you have grated is covering all the tomatoes. Leave it to rest to one side. And then what you need to do is prepare your avocado so that that can be resting on your serving plates. So you can choose, really. I prefer to have it resting on my serving plates, thank you. Um, just because I prefer it that way. But you can put it in the salad if you wish. Um, cut it in half like this and take the stone out be very careful there we go there we go <laughs> and don't use a large knife unless you're very knife savvy we want to cut it into chunks basically i'm just checking my own recipe here then what we need to do is grab the chickpeas and your cumin and your olive oil so this is another sort of marination situation. <laughs> marination situation. Um, drizzle, drizzle. About that much. Thank you. Uh, cumin, and I have become an expert at measuring without measuring. So I'm not gonna measure it, but the recipe calls for a tablespoon. Um, but I really like cumin, so if you go a bit over, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what you want to do when that's all mixed is pop it in your sort of serving bowl, if you will, just so that you've got enough room to do other things. And to that, we then add cucumber. Now, interestingly, Spanish cucumbers <laughs> are very odd looking. Yeah, um, not the cucumbers I grew up with, but it's a better. They taste similar. Taste better, much better. They're less watery. Peel it, preferably, um, unless you like peel, but I don't. So peel it and chop it into quarters. What are you doing over there, glamorous assistant? I'm chopping the avocado. I saw that go on the floor. <laughs> no, you, you didn't. <laughs> no. I don't really peel mine super well because it's rustic. <laughs> But you want to have them about a centimetre to two centimetres thick. Then I like to stack them like this and then it makes it easier when you want to just cut them in half. You see? Actually, I'm not sure you can see. There you go. Um, so we're going to cut them in quarters like that and throw them in with the chickpeas. This recipe is quite good to do in advance. Uh, not too far in advance because they're all fresh ingredients, but say you wanted to serve it for lunch, you could do it in the morning, go get yourself ready, and then the longer it marinates in its own sort of juices, the tastier it gets, and it will last in the fridge, covered, about five days. What have you been doing then, Charlotte, while you've been... Large red onion. What have I been doing? Um, what have I? Oh, TikTok. I've been really into TikTok, so um, it's good and bad. The good thing is, it's great and funny, um, and I've done a few myself. Obviously, I haven't posted them, but... Yeah, so the other night, I thought, oh, I'll just watch a couple, and then I'll go to sleep. And, uh, yeah, I went to sleep at three in the morning, because it's quite distracting. So I don't recommend watching them before bed, but if you do have a TikTok, comment below so I can come and watch them, because I do like them. Uh, Mother and I made a dance one, which is actually on our Instagram, which I shall link below. It's at Travelling with Mother. Uh, so if you want to check out our dancey TikTok attempt, you can go and visit that. Can you bring me the red onion, please? Red onion. Oh! <laughs> you all right there? No. Did you walk into something? Oh, Mother needs to get some new glasses. This is the problem. Okay, chop your red onion into very fine slices. Would you like to do this job? Chop the onion? No, I definitely not I don't really not. want to cry. Unsharp knives are very dangerous. Okay then, Aunt Josephine. So you need a whole red onion, but make sure it's sort of this size. And you need to cut the whole thing, but into tiny little strips. And 
And we are going to add those little strips into the mix. I suppose you could adjust this recipe if you find red onion too strong, because I know for me, if I eat red onion too late at night, it gives me heartburn. Perhaps that's a unique thing. Um, but you can adjust this and just use half red onion if you wish. Um, but the recipe does call for a whole one, so. Depends how rebellious you'd like to be. Okay, so mummy's coming to help me mix because you're very good at mixing, aren't you? In fact, I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil. I like mixing round parties with champagne oh, and yes. people. You're more of a social mixer or a cocktail mixer. You're not really a... Oh, do you fancy a cocktail? Because we've got some champagne and lychee. No, we could I make a lychee. So, um, I was going to also mention a podcast I've been listening to. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. Shagged, Married and Annoyed by Chris and Rosie Ramsey. Mother dearest doesn't really like it I why don't, don't you like it i mean it's hilarious and like the number one podcast in the country but it's okay hilarious what listening yes. to people laugh it's really funny they don't say anything just laugh mother doesn't like it when people are happy i love comedy but they're not funny honey all they do is pretend to laugh and also no i'm sorry they might be funny but i can't listen to thieves thieves what have they stolen children's money they were talking about this girl who, what did she do? I can't oh, remember. No. something to do with her father. I can't remember. It was her grandfather. You'll have to go and listen to it. Her grandfather was leaving. No, no, don't listen to it. They're thieves. Basically, they were telling okay. a story about a girl whose grandfather left an inheritance to this girl and her brother. And the girl didn't find out about hers till 16 years or something after he'd left it when she was 18. And the brother said, what did you do with your money? And she said, what money? And he told her. And she discovered that her mother and father oh, yeah, had used all right. this money, as thousands and thousands of pounds, irrespective of how much it is anyway. And the mother and father thought, oh, she's too young, we'll just use it. And the girl has forgiven them. The girl, the girl is saying, OK, you can sort of pay me back, I don't know, a euro a month or something. And I'm like, sue them? Anyway, while they were, while they were highlighting that incident, then um, the, the boy of the Chris and Ramsey, the man, said... Do you mean... What? Sorry, Chris and Ramsey. What are they called? Chris and Rosie. Ramsey? Okay, well, Chris and Rosie, so it must be Chris. Chris and Rosie agreed with it. Just as bad. She's a, um, what is it? Geordie. Co-offender. Co-offender. Wow. Um, so he said, yeah, yeah, well, my little boy was, you know, if he's given £20 in a birthday card, yeah, of course I'll take it. I've got no time for them. Sorry, thieves. Can you pass me the feta cheese, please? Thank you, madam. And I would say a centimetre thick uh, and chop that in half, in half again, and cube it. That's kind of how I do it. And sprinkle that on top. That was sort of half a handful, so four more of those. And then we're also going to add some garlic powder into this. Just do a sprinkle. Me, personally. You, you're more than welcome to, um, to use a tablespoon measure if you wish. Uh, mother, what do you like to mix? Uh, I did realise that in, in amongst all of this chit chat, not really allowed to be eating the ingredients, I haven't mentioned my latest crush, TV crush. You were talking about Jamie Dornan last week or last What's video. Did we um, talk about Jamie Dornan? I know, very, most unusual. Very rare, darling. Uh, but I have developed a crush on Richard Madden. Jamie Dornan look alike. They look nothing alike. Oh, they do! What planet the are same, you on? They've got the same attraction. They don't look alike. Oh, but I love, I do love Richard's accent. So if you don't know, Richard is the actor that plays the bodyguard in Bodyguard. Serious? He also plays, yeah, the TV series. He also plays, um, oh, he's in Game of Thrones. I don't watch that. Is he? But apparently he's in that, so... I'm just going to drizzle a little bit more oil on the top. But do salt, pepper, and I like mixed herbs. So this is herbs of Provence. Um, Are you drinking ADHD a lot of, or? Drinking lot of uh, extra virgin olive oil, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Rosemary, thyme. In fact, I'm trying to read Spanish. Oh, Oregano, oh, basil, and two others that I don't know. Thank you for your singing now. This is about a tablespoon as well. We're just going to sprinkle this on. I use a lot. Oh, the wind's blowing in. <laughs> I use a lot of this um, in most of my recipes. But you can substitute this for um, dried sage and dried, 
dried sage and dried basil. You can take off the chunky stalks of these fresh herbs, but I wouldn't take off all the stalks because they actually hold the most flavour according to Jamie Oliver. And I feel very Jamie Oliver-esque out here, considering we are, you know, cooking outside. It's very, uh, very rustic vibes. This is lovely, that's perfect. And we're going to need the remaining two garlic cloves. So we need some more garlic cloves. We're going to add to this mix. <gasps> okay, yeah, I can do it one-handed. <laughs> Try again. So we shall add the herbs in. And give that a stir. We're going to add the garlic cloves here, in there. Crushed, not whole, obviously. Just, and then you can peel them really easily. You trim off the end, and they just peel super smoothly like this. And then we are going to take the garlic and grate it straight into the mix. Uh, if you've got a crusher, like a normal person, I would recommend using a crusher. It is as good if you've got a crusher that works. If you've got one at all, really. So we're going to mix that in, the garlic. And at this point, you may add... <laughs> I am losing a few. We've got a few uh, soldiers lost at war here. Um, yeah. So more salt. If you've got a salt cellar that works, that's preferable. Then the final stages are kind of putting it all together. So at this point, you'd be adding your tomatoes. At this point, you'd have a bigger bowl. At this point, you'd have a large bowl. You'd add your we tomatoes. We did have one, but I threw it away, didn't I? You did. Thank you very much. It was really unhelpful this morning when I was looking for it. So mix your toms again, and in they go. Oh, that looks juicy. If you were going to serve this at a, at a later date, I would recommend leaving your tomatoes on the top so you can cover it in cling film and the juices of the tomatoes and the basil infuse into the salad. If you're going to serve it straight away, then obviously you mix it now. Um, but as I am going to be serving mine later tonight, I'm going to leave them like this. And really, that's it. Um, if you want to add more basil or more parsley to serve, that's perfectly all right. I probably will later add more basil. And that's pretty much it. So I shall show you what it looks like. So you've got all the ingredients below the tomatoes. If you're fancying a light meal, this is perfect. And if you want something a little bit more filling, you can add two baked potatoes with it. I prefer the sort of small to medium red skinned potatoes because they taste a little bit more fresh. And I always make garlic butter, garlic parsley butter. And you've already got the parsley, you've already got the garlic out. So just whip it up with some butter and you can put that on your baked potatoes and it's delish. Alternatively, just do some garlic bread. Use your garlic parsley butter, pop it on some toast that's equally as delish, or both if you really fancy some carbs. I've got a, a large spoon, which is fine. <laughs> oh, you've got a fork, good. These are our ginormous. <laughs> a little bit of chickpea, a little bit of cukes. <laughs> Perf, this is quite a large mouthful. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Um, other than that, this is my chickpea feasty salad and I really hope you make it, take a photo, send it across to us. Our social medias are ooh, Instagram at Travelling with Mother, Twitter at TWM Original and I've got a website which is www.travellingwithmother.com which has everything on there that you may ever need to know. I've got a blog if you fancy something light reading during this time travellingwithmother.blogspot.com all of these links will be down below as also this link to this recipe will be down below and that is the end of the video so thank you so much for watching give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and comment down below what you've been up to what you've been doing how's life subscribe there's a button subscribe turn your notification bell on because we will be making more recipe videos probably for the rest of time it seems. God knows how long we're going to be stuck in this situation. So sending you guys lots of love and uplifting thoughts and we will be with you again very soon. Have a lovely week. Bye!